uh, hello everyone hello youtubers uh, this is Godfrey Sechizivu and I'm going to take you through uh, Windows installation I'm going to use Microsoft Windows 7 uh, that is 6 in 1 so we do have 32 bits and 64 bits in one installation file which is the ISO file uh, it was last updated in August 2020 uh, I'm going to use the virtual box for this setup and maybe some other thing I can say uh, the same steps you can follow when you are installing other versions of Windows uh, I've set up my virtual box and this is Oracle virtual box manager which is uh, it is version version 5 uh, I think the uh, the other things are 13 and the rest of stuff but it is version 5 I'm using on Windows 7 uh, and I'm using my Dell my Dell computer here uh, it is i5 and the rest of stuff inside I won't explain much about it uh, let's just dash into uh, today's video uh, so the setup if you have installed windows like in the previous video i showed you how you can burn a windows disk how you can uh, convert your iso image and create a bootable usb drive so in this video we are continuing it just like a continuation of the other so we are going to be using the cd-rom or the usb disk uh, that we previously converted to a bootable media so what we are going to do after inserting in your boot um, booting medium uh, that is the CD with Windows setup or the flash disk that is made to be bootable so the next step we go to is to start our computer uh, so on starting the computer we press F9 or F12 but since I'm using virtual box, I can't demonstrate these as I'm starting. So when you press those keys, some computers, it depends on the manufacturer. We have Asus, Apple, Dell, HP, Compaq, IBM, uh, and so many who are coming up. So it depends on the manufacturer and the manufacturer configurations for the BIOS. So after uh, pressing that, you make sure that the key you have pressed, either F9, F10, or F12, takes you to the boot options or takes you to the boot sequence. Now the boot sequence is a sequence that consists of uh, it consists of booting from the network, and that that is at times put as net BIOS or if you want to upgrade the BIOS, you use that, you boot from the network, you boot from the CD, you boot from the uh, USB drive, you boot from the hard disk, you boot from the, uh, the floppy, you'll find FDD, that is floppy disk drive. So it depends on your computer and the components that are installed on your computer. So if you are one of those who are still having the computers of the floppy disk drive and that is the drive you're having and in most cases those are outdated technologies improving. So let us dash into today's video. So I'm starting this virtual, uh, virtual environment that I created for Windows 7 and we are going to see how we do set up Windows 7 on our computers. So assuming you have selected now the CD that you are going to be using uh, for the setup. Oops. Okay, what happened? It is now requiring me to have uh, the CD installed. But otherwise, uh, let me just check on the options here. So I'll look for the ISO file the ISO file uh, that has the Windows setup so I'll come and check in my computer 
I do have software somewhere down here. So Windows 7 Ultimate 6 in 1. So that is uh, a standard version that was made in August 2020. And I'm taking that because that is the installation. If you don't have the ISO file, uh, you can go to Microsoft, you download it. And there are so many other websites you can go to and get this software. So you can see down there they were saying that press F12 uh, for the boot. But I didn't press just because I know uh, this is virtual box. So once I press some keys, uh, some things might go wrong. So here we are on our screen and we are seeing uh, the Windows is trying to load the components. Uh, it is showing the Windows 10 logo uh, just because that version contains uh, some software like the .NET Framework for .NET Framework 4.7 which is also part in Windows 10. So let us wait for it to load the components and we see how we can go through different steps. Uh, you can go to different websites like getintopc.com you download this image uh, perhaps if possible I will set up the links in the description uh, as we continue and wait for the virtual box to set up each and everything uh, don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the no notification bell as well as you can share my videos with your friends yeah thank you so much I knew you clicked thank you yeah so here we are this is my virtual environment uh, generation 2 uh, so that is the computer that has been set up and that is also part of the windows that is also being installed so we come here language of installation so we are setting up windows 7 once you boot from the other device that has the windows setup uh, in most cases we do not change this but if you want you can change the language to your preferred language but for this version has only English in United States and then the time and currency uh, those ones you leave in most cases because uh, I don't prefer changing them and actually what I do I just click the next button so the copyright uh, for this version of Windows is available at Microsoft Corporations and that was in 2016 so you are not allowed to duplicate uh, redistribute or take other advantages of the software the, those are part of the license and terms so when you reach here at times we do have uh, Windows that has that was previously installed but now we just have a damage our computer cannot boot you can press uh, or click the repair your computer option and then you are taken to the advanced commands you see how you can repair your windows but during uh, repairing of windows don't forget to use the exact version uh, of the software or window that you used during installation but otherwise, today's video, uh, okay, I'll record some some video for you uh, on how we repair and some troubleshooting methods we can take if our computers fail to boot. So I will show them to you. Yeah, so today we are going to see how to install. So the next step is to click the install now button on our screen. So you can see down here is showing that setup is starting. So let us wait for the setup to start. So this takes a couple of minutes. 
uh, we shall wait and wait and wait until when it is done. So it depends on how fast your computer is, but since I'm using a virtual environment, I set up just one GB of RAM. So I didn't want to waste much of my RAM because I'm running the recording software and the rest of software. So it just depends on the computer and how fast it is. Uh, so here we are. So we are having uh, different versions of Windows 7 Ultimate. So we do have the standard version and then we do have one that will be cracked by that. We have one that will be cracked by that. And then so you realize here the architecture they are showing x86 and then here they are saying x64. So this one is compatible with 32 bits you know when these people of computing realized that 32 bits was non compatible to some hardware and software then they made a further establishment and so they up upgraded the architecture to 86 so we are taking uh, the standard version or std windows 7 ultimate for 64 bits uh, that is what I choose. Uh, we do have different Windows 7 versions like Home, uh, Enterprise, Ultimate, Professional, and Data. But you realize that Ultimate, Enterprise, and Professional, most in most cases, we do prefer to use Ultimate in Professional. Uh, when you use Data version, you realize that you get some complications in, in some complications in software installation and even uh, performance of your computer might not be fine so what we do we take up the ultimate or professional version so we continue So here we come, applicable notices and license terms. So these are some of the things that you should read through. Uh, but I, for one, I don't take much time during the reading. If I read, like, at my first time when I was installing Windows 7, so I read through all these because I had to go through them and understand things that can come. Uh, if I pirate and do other things with Windows 7 uh, You know, this is not my software and it is not from my company. So what happens? Uh, you might face challenges if you do uh, Sabotage with the software uh, So you accept the license terms and then click next so we do have these two things here We do have the upgrade and then we do have the custom then help me decide so I won't click help me decide since I've been installing this uh, from yeah uh, that uh, that is about eight years back or even more than eight so we do have upgrade uh, installing Windows and keep files settings and applications so if you use this, in most cases, uh, we use this if at all you have Windows 7, but you realize that you have found a new version of Windows 7. So what happens? You can take on this option. But in most cases, I don't recommend you. I do recommend you to go for this. Why are we installing Windows on our computer? At times, the computers have turned this low due to lack of space the computers have turned this low due to malware virus uh, and other attacks that have come to the computer uh, at times we do install new 
windows uh, or copies of windows just because uh, we would like to experience the new features in that windows for example if i'm moving from xp to windows 7 uh, i would like to feel hmm, what others are feeling you get it when they are using windows 7. i for one prefer windows 7 just because uh, during programming it does not consume much memory uh, it is more secure in terms uh, of security uh, the themes and the rest of stuff in Windows 7, we do not have background, uh, driver setup and the rest of stuff are easy when you are using Windows 7. Uh, please, you leave your comment why you prefer any version of Windows, but Windows 7, I for one, I prefer it. Uh, people might rush to Windows 8, but a little bit not good. I, uh, I recommend you, if you would like to, we, to use latest version uh, i recommend you to use windows 10 because for that it is going through constant updates and upgrades so you can just download your fresh copy uh, of windows 10 and then install so the same steps that we have been following from the start they are the same steps that you will follow during windows 10 installation so i use the custom uh, this is install windows only so that happens, uh, if you choose this option, it will remove each and everything on your computer. I repeat, <laughs> don't take me bad, don't mark me, uh, don't comment those weird comments. Uh, when you do a custom installation, there are two things that are going to happen. But what happens in common, the drivers will be lost. And the application programs that you had previously installed on your computer will also be lost if you use the custom installation if you use the upgrade drivers uh, program files or applications and then the settings in your computer will remain i for one prefer custom so i use custom and now since this is virtual and i had not yet set up the drive uh, the partitions on my drive so what i'm going to do uh, i might carry out the partitioning of my computer uh, let us first do the partitioning assuming this is a fresh computer and it had no uh, partitions on your hard disk maybe you're having uh, this one is 32 gb uh, that is the space i allocated for my virtual drive but you might have one of 320, you might have one of 500, you might have one of 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, 4 terabyte, depending on your desire. Uh, so I'll take on the partitioning, don't forget, it is 1024 that constitutes to 1 GB. So if I want, uh, if I want, if I want, maybe to have uh i will take on 15 gb so i'll have 15 times 124 giving me 15 360 so i'll take that as my uh, first partition that i will be using uh, 15 15 360 apply so since it is the first partition it will be taken as the primary partition uh, let us wait for the computer to yeah it has allocated the file so what happens i'm having this remaining unallocated space of 17 gb but you realize that if i click on this which is the primary partition so it is the one that will take on my windows um, files and the rest of stuff that will come from the setup so they are saying that there must be at least 18 GB of space. So what I'm going to do is delete this partition and create one partition of 20 GB. So I will remove also the, the reserved space and then recreate one of 20 GB. If you are not familiar with, uh, with the partition creation, what you can do uh, delete this. I need 20 GB. So
so if it is 20 GB, then I, ha I add the 1000, which is the three zeros. So apply. So yes. Uh, it allocates. So I'm doing this if this is a new hard drive. So this will be my other partition that will be for my files. So take note, uh, just because my hard disk is small and Windows requires a huge space for installation, uh, I recommend you to have if you're having 320 GB of hard disk, then you can partition your computer to have uh, you can partition your computer to have uh, maybe 80 GB for Windows installation and then the rest for files. Uh, I would select this, which is the primary partition, and it is the one that I had selected first to carry on my Windows installation. So I click the next version the next button and then windows will start copying files so we'll wait for that when it reaches a hundred it gets the files ready then it it installs the features installs the updates and then finishes up so those are the those are the steps that we do follow during windows installation but i'm not leaving the video uh, we are continuing a little more to see other things that do happen after restarting so don't forget to click the like button subscribe and also turn on the net notification bell as well as sharing this video to others who would learn who would like to learn how to install windows on their computers these steps are not the same steps we follow when we are installing windows xp and i will take you through that episode i will record a video for it I think it will be uh, after the troubleshooting video, I will show you how to install Windows XP. So in those days, uh, 2005, 2008, uh, we had Windows XP, Service Pack 1, Service Pack 2, and Service Pack 3. And from Service Pack 3, that is when Microsoft Windows decided, I mean Microsoft Corporation decided to take on Windows Vista as the new type of Windows. Uh, when the program failed, they started Windows 7 after some years. And then uh, I think it was around 2013, 2014 there, Windows 8 was already on market. And then 2015, uh, Windows 10 had also started being published. So people were rushing for it 2016 there. But I was one of those people who did not like to run for Windows 10 just because of uh, security things. Uh, you know, new, new stuff comes with disadvantages and advantages. So I don't recommend programmers and network engineers to normally rush for new things. Uh, at least take chance and participate in the debugging and testing, but do not take uh, risk of installing new stuff on your computers or computers of companies and warehouses where you're working because uh, you'll get security breaches and then you'll be penalized. So this will take us some time uh, during the getting files ready. That takes some time. Then uh, I'll just skip this and we'll move on.
everything has gone well and we have succeeded in our installation so now we type in the computer name so i've been uh the rest of the things when the computer restarts you just leave it for you just leave everything for it so it will carry on each and everything and that is needed and then uh, you'll have your computer set up with windows so let us just put the name uh, that is the name I've chosen uh, if you need the password you punch it in then you can select the time maybe Nairobi or some other time uh, I select public so you are done with your windows installation that is how we install windows 7 on our computers so windows is finalizing your settings uh, we we'll wait for that and then we receive the desktop so we can start doing each and everything uh, from our new computer that has just been set up has started uh, can see Windows 7 Ultimate. Uh, don't forget this was VirtualBox. So it is now preparing my desktop and then I get to start. So those are the things that we normally do. Uh, the other part, after uh, installing, assuming uh, that part where we do the partitioning, in case you find that uh, you, you do have some important files in downloads, documents that you don't want to lose, don't format. Don't format. Just click next. If you're having space, then the computer will leave them for you. You'll go to windows.old and try to clean up each and everything that is there. But before cleaning it up, uh, you'll have to, you'll have to uh, make sure that, you'll have to make sure that uh, you have already uh, taken the other backups from the documents and the rest of the folders that had your files. So that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Now uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button, turn on the notification bell and you receive each and every update uh, from our channel. Uh, in case I want my computer icon on the screen, I'll come to computer and then say show on desktop. And let us try to see the other partitions that we created. Now we had one for 20 GB and it was the one for Windows, uh, here it is, and then the other disk that had around 15 GB or 12. So I'll click on it and say format. If that is taking much time, I'll click on manage here. I come to computer, click on man, right click and then select manage. Uh, so it will give me a dialogue. Okay, it has brought the format. So I can say my files. And that is the hard disk free format. Okay. It should be in NTFS file format or oh, that should be the file system that you should use for your hard disks uh, at least we have seen how we can set up windows uh, and the disk has finished formatting so we can open it yeah it is empty. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, continue to visit our channel 
for more videos about computing. Thank you.